Good evening and welcome to BizTech 125. Tonight we're focusing on professionalism in the workplace. And there's a presentation um, by Shelvin Campbell and Daryl uh, Taylor, which is a, just a really, really good overview and a talking, and I'm going to use their talking points to kind of talk about when we talk about professionalism in the workplace. And again, this slideshow is in PDF format and it will be in the content area for you. Okay. So when we talk about professionalism in the workplace and we talk about what attributes we're looking for professionalism in the workplace, often um, you'll hear, you know, trustworthy. In an office setting, there's going to be, and I'm going to maximize this just a little bit, in the office setting, as I don't need to tell you, there's going to be times in which you need to be entrusted with information that needs to be held of the utmost confidence. That could be the hiring application. It could be where there's highly sensitive client or employee data. So that trustworthiness is huge when it comes to professionalism. And being competent, knowing that if you don't know something that you're willing to ask and being respectful to others, even when there's a difference of opinion, acting with integrity at all times, and of course being considerate and empathetic are all attributes that, that we talk about. When we talk about professionalism, excuse me, when we talk about professionalism as well, the ability, some of the um, adjectives that you'll often hear us say are they're courteous, they're dependable, they're cooperative. More importantly, they're committed. They're committed to the organization. They're committed to their job. One of the personal work ethics that I have always tried to embody in that no matter what task is in front of me, I'm going to do it to my best with all of my ability with the best of most possible outcome. Now what's interesting about that is that often takes in a piece of humility. One of the things I've always told my children as well as those I've worked with is if I'm cleaning toilets I'm going to do it well and they're going to be the best cleanest toilets ever. When we talk about quality and the characteristics of a professional when we talk about professionalism, it's the ability to be approachable as well. If any of you have ever had an employment situation where you have been governed by fear, you will probably agree with me that it is not always the most effective. Also, being trustworthy and supportive and respectable, but also being accountable. And accountability runs two ways. Accountability is taking responsibility when things don't go well, as well as never taking the credit when it wasn't yours. Okay, so first of all, what do you think of SARS professionalism go? And is there anybody who has a personal story or anything you want to share right now about a situation in the workplace where either your professionalism was challenged or you witnessed some amazingly unprofessional behavior? Anybody want to be brave? Unmute yourself, share. I know one of you has a story. Come on, Alexa. Oh, somebody unmuted themselves. Carolyn, any stories of unprofessional behavior? My, Shauna. What do you mean, like where, where I witnessed it or what? Anything where when you were in a professional setting and you had a situation or an individual that you dealt with that simply based upon our little conversation so far, their behavior would be considered less than professional. Has anyone ever had a confidence broken in the workplace? Or has yes. Okay. Okay, there you go. Okay. I think everybody has. I know. Is it something anyone can share? Well, I can remember this happened at a past job where um, an employer uh, assured me the confidence would be kept, but she wanted to know what was going on in this um, newly developing uh, learning center. And she asked my opinion what I was observing as far as the dynamics there because she was hearing rumblings. And she said, you will never, ever, ever have to worry about your name, you know, being mentioned or anything else. I just need to know 
basically there was um, a lot of in, you know, in-house fighting. That is awesome. That's a great example. But then, so oh, great. being that it was my boss and my supervisor, I spilled because it was dreadful in there. Nobody wanted to work in there and she wanted to know why. And I finally said, well, you know what? There's some very aggressive personalities who are just pretty tough to, you know, coexist with. Well, next thing I know, she pulled, you know, some of them in. And Carolyn said, and it was like, oh, my gosh. Wow. I didn't wow. know she was going to do that. She had assured me she wouldn't. And the person came back um, full of vim and vinegar. And I didn't know why he was giving me these really cutting remarks and, you know, getting real personal. And uh, finally, he said, she told me, you said, da, 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 da. Um, See, and when it gets into, and, and you know, when it comes into really dicey situations, such as harassment in the workplace um, and hostile work environments, it, it very much comes down to the issue of at one point in time, professionalism did break down without a doubt. And so when we talk about professional men in the workplace, you know, when we define it, um, and thanks, Carolyn, for that. That is absolutely exactly, you know, what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. There's a specific style of behavior in the workplace that is kind of expected. And then we have these values and professional roles, and it really is exhibited by our behavior. Now, ironically, it's also our behavior outside of an organization. With social media and with so much um, living out now as versus private life, and often there's a very gray barrier and um, a border of, of where does our personal life begin and our professional life. Well, the truth of the matter is it's very, very mixed now, and this makes it very, very dicey to navigate. But we've got to have respect for ourselves as others, and there's those who are going to have the know-how and the skills, and some of this does come with a very mature responsibility and the ability to problem solve, persevere, and keep your eye on the goal. And then we talked about how it's judged. And there are these unwritten rules. This is where it can get really tricky, though. We have our attitudes, but then we have the perception of our attitudes. Then we have conflict and how we deal with that conflict. And can you get the person, the personal touch out of it? Because we are in the professional environment. And remembering that our words have power and the words we choose whether they be an email or whether they be face to face amazingly powerful and we cannot forget that also um, the unwritten rules are our values within certain organizations there are some spoken and some unspoken values and branching off or deviating from those values can absolutely judge you as to be less professional, as well as your communication styles and how we communicate the language that we use. So remember, there are standards around us and or you are establishing the standards. My wish for you and my intent for all the professionals that we train is that your level of professionalism is always just a little tad hair higher than the expectations or the standards around you. But there's also the situational and sometimes cultural impact as well. There's um, high context cultures, low context cultures, some, cont um, some cultures where the concept of stealing ideas versus sharing ideas is also very blurred. And we need to understand that. And when we talk about the communication and your image and your competence and your demeanor and your behavior, all of those definitely take into consideration the professionalism, but it is how others perceive you. And that's where you've got to own it. Sometimes it's easy to look at what unprofessionalism and, and that is simply not conforming to the standards of or unprofessional behavior, but you all know it when you see it. So, what is expected from a professional? Well, where do you start? Well, you start with, again, your professional presence as well as your integrity, self-respect, personal responsibility, treat others the way you want to be treated. All of this really goes back to that golden rule, really, really, really basic.
and having that individual responsibility, respect for others and their rights, knowing the boundaries, staying out of others' affairs, unless it's work-related, we don't engage, and then we walk away. If somebody is coming up to you with gossip or secondary information, my rule of thumb is, you know what, if they're talking about somebody else behind their back to you, they're talking about you behind your back with somebody else. So this involves professionalism as far as not handling personal things at work. And once again, that's become really blurred. People are managing their social media from work. Well, it depends on the norms of, again, your environment. Keeping appropriate language out of the workplace and erring on the side of professionalism and being creative the language we use instead of offensive. Um, personal cell phone usage. This is all just very, very basic stuff and not crossing those professional boundaries. When we talk about relationships in the workplace, you know, is it wrong to date a coworker? Well, that can get pretty dicey. And what are the expectations and the understandings of the profession within your workplace? Self-disclosure versus exploitation, um, breaches of confidentiality. All of these are huge, huge red flags. So just remembering that we communicate clearly. Um, we keep everything professional. And it's simply a matter of, you know what? I don't feel comfortable with this conversation. You're not judging them. You're simply saying, I don't feel comfortable with this, and I've got a project I'm working on, so I'm going to go ahead and excuse myself. But I hope you have a really, really good day. There's also a lot of personal workplace baggage that people bring with it, um, and this is bad emotional baggage that's happened from previous jobs or work relationships that haven't worked out, bosses that you don't like, really always know what's really important and getting that emotional baggage out of the workplace. So that is understanding work-life balance. And it requires discrimination and distinction of what really matters in the workplace and really examining your own personal values. Your homework balance, one rule of thumb is check it at the door. And Every environment is different. In some environments, it's a very close family, and you do share stories of your children, your family. You have to feel that out at first. It's great to experience those successes, but at the same time, when it comes to those very stressful and challenging times, that can really damage a professional relationship. As professionals, please pamper yourself. Please set aside day, time, evening, times just for you. Daily activities, take a break. Reward yourself. Always start with self-respect because how you treat yourself is how others will treat you. And then pay attention to how you communicate. And always have those kind of closing conversations when things don't go right. And that's when you simply say, hey, I noticed some stress. If it's something I said, I am so sorry. I enjoy working with you. I value our professional relationship, and that's the line I'm going to hold. So just keeping that into um, consideration. When we talk about professionalism in the workplace, I've put some additional resources here for you, and I kind of want to go over those now, and then I want to talk about some of the expectations and move this out of the way. Perfect. Okay. When you go into modules this week, and we have all the fun stuff that we're working on now, there's the weekly webinar, Professionalism in the Workplace. The slides um, of Shovelin I just placed here. Then I've placed an article, and this is called Read Me. When you click on it, it will open up a website from thebalance.com. When we talk about work-life balance, thebalance.com is a great website of wonderful resources and information, career planning, workplace tips on relationships, all kinds of good stuff. This particular article is on professionalism in the workplace and how to conduct yourself on the job. Once again, much of this information is going to be very intuitive to you. So make being on time a priority. Don't be grumpy. Now, going back to being on time, this is something that again, is definition. For some of you, if your job starts at 8, for you on time is 8 o'clock. For some of us, if we're to be at work at 8, on time for us is 7.45. So 
understand, again, the culture of your environment. At American River College, it makes me crazy because I start all of my meetings on time and I'm constantly fighting the battle of a historic precedence. At American River College, you wander in any time in the first 15 minutes. And by the time I run a meeting, first of all, my meetings are never more than 55 oh minutes. And if you've missed the first 15, you've missed the majority of the content. Don't be jumpy. Um, grumpy, <laughs> dress appropriately, watch your mouth, offer to help your colleagues, don't gossip, try to stay positive, don't hide from your mistakes, always fight fair, don't lie, and don't air your dirty laundry. Additional resource here is 10 professional traits. These 10 professional traits is a simple and fun video that is created on the top 10 personal traits when it comes to professionalism in the workplace. It's a very short video, won't take much of your time, but relatively entertaining. Now for the assignment for this week. There is an article I'm going to have you access. This article is 10 ways to be professional at work. When you access this article, this is from livecareer.com, another great career source with resumes, cover letters, interview jobs, companies, and resource information. This is a simple list of 10 clear and concise ways to be professional at work. Many of them will echo the same sentiment and topics already discussed. Here's your homework. Once again, because as an office assistant, much of your job will be the production and the, and, and the management of documents, in this article you will review 10 quick tips for professionalism at work. You will use your document production skills to make this into a visually appealing document that can be posted as a reference. Be colorful, creative, clear, concise, and use the accurate content. Use images, graphics, clip art, shapes, word art, above all, have fun. Please use border shapes. You are also welcome to use templates in the flyer area. Simply make sure that the theme of 10 ways to be professional at work are easily and clearly displayed. So that's the additional activity for the week. Everything can be found in modules. Are there any questions about what I covered tonight? Uh, not a question um, so much, but I do want to clarify that I did end up um, somewhere else where I was asked the same question by um, an administrator and I tried to avoid answering it, but I have found that there are people who do keep their word. Yes. Um, oh, Carolyn, so. yes. So I don't want to seem like I'm complaining. It was just I learned a tough lesson there, which is... Um, Gosh, even if your administrator asks you a direct question, you got to be really careful because they may they may break your confidence. Right, mm -hmm. um, and it's so. And, and Carolyn, you bring up such an amazingly important point. It all comes down to our own integrity, and when you're put on the spot such as that, um, there is there. There is a precedence for some protection when it comes to specific issues that would be quote unquote whistleblowing. In a case like this, no, it's just feedback. But again, for some of us, we actually, um, I have um, personally gone to colleagues before and after a conversation very similar to that, given a heads up to say, just to let you know, there's some concern about what's going on. And if I'm asked for my perspective, I'm very comfortable giving it. And I'm hoping you would be too. Um, but again, I feel very, very comfortable. Again, it's that kind of um, self-owning and self-confidence of just always trying to make sure you do the right thing. But great point, Carolyn. Okay, awesome. I'm going to stop the recording now, but I'll hang up for a little bit for anybody with personal questions. See you on Monday.